go a little further and learn a little more. And one of the best ways to always learn, of course, is to ask good questions. And I know that you have asked, you have prepared some questions. So, teachers, I know you've designated some questions. Um, I think it's uh, correct. At this time, third grade, let's go with some third grade questions so we have it yeah. in prepared. Um, go ahead, Cameron, stand up. You need to be nice and loud. Where was I born? I was born in Danville, Vermont. I mean, when? When? 1792, which was the first, was the year before, it was, it was in the, when George Washington was president of the United States when I was born. Uh, George Washington was president. These are the great three questions that were prepared. Hang on. Oh, well, I guess I can't be too immodest. Um, I feel that I had a crucial role in ending slavery. Obviously, you know about Lincoln and how he uh, was the great emancipator. But some historians say that I should be considered as great an emancipator as Abraham Lincoln. And that is because Whereas Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves in the South, I was able to push through changes in the Constitution, which ended slavery everywhere, including the North, because there were slaves in the North uh, during the Civil War. And not only did I uh, have the 13th Amendment passed to end slavery, I also had the 14th Amendment passed which ensured that people would be treated equally. And we also tried to have the South change so that it would be a more equal society. Unfortunately, we were not too uh, successful in that. So I would say that I had a major role in ending slavery uh, in this country. Thanks a lot. The best thing that I accomplished was the 14th Amendment. Uh, because the 14th Amendment continues to affect our lives to this day. And I realize that's kind of a technical uh, term for you, 14th Amendment. But basically they changed the basic law of this country. And it said you can't make special laws for people that you can't have laws for black people and other laws for white people, that you have to treat everybody the same. And I would say that's my greatest legacy and my most proud accomplishment. Oh, yes. The, my dedication to equality did not stop at the grave. I refused to be buried in a uh, in a segregated cemetery. Back in those days, even cemeteries would say, only white people can be buried here. Uh, we won't accept black people. So I went around and I found a cemetery where they would accept both white and black people. And my epitaph on my grave talks about this. And it says, I repose in this quiet and secluded spot not from any natural preference for solitude, but finding other cemeteries limited as to race by charter rules. I have chosen this, that I might illustrate in my death the principles which I advocated through a long life, equality of man before his creator. Another question. Why do we have a limp? <laughs> because I was born with a club foot. And a club foot, instead of having, you have a nice flat foot, I would imagine all of you do. <laughs> what it is, is it just looks like a fist. And so that would cause him to limp. Dad. To Bill Stevens, the school. Our school was built by the local community. Back in 1926, if you guys get on the, the websites with our nice new uh, uh, 
interactive whiteboards, you can go back in time and find the pictures on the website of the school when it was built in 1926. And when the school was first built, there were no houses around it. It's up here pretty much all by itself on this hill. There's no houses around it. And it was because population growth was coming this direction, so that's why the school was built in 1926. And just to remind all of you, 1976, the school closed for a little while because um, it was a junior high, and then it reopened in 1981 as Patty Stevens Elementary. Next question. Emily. Why is this school called Patty Stevens? Why is this school called Patty Stevens? I would defer to the principal, but I would imagine uh, a couple different reasons I would imagine that you have it is because Patty Stevens was the savior of public education. So it's appropriate to name a school after that in Stevens. Uh, there are a number of schools named after me uh, in Washington, D.C., in, uh, in New York City, in Chambersburg. Uh, and I think also I've been told that this is close to Freedom Road, where there was the Underground Railroad uh, was very prevalent. So that, that probably is another reason that uh, it was named after uh, me. There's another great web search. Go around and find the different schools throughout the country that are named after that Stevens brand. No, I did not have kids. <laughs> That's why I have a, a niece, a uh, great, great grand niece. I was a lifelong bachelor. Let's, right now, for uh, Matthew Stevens, our expectations that we have for our school, let's say them together. They are B. Education was very important, so she pushed it very hard. So he went to school. She pushed and got them some schooling. And when he was going to school because of his club foot, and you guys hear me talk about it all the time, the most important thing we do is to be kind. And so that is Stevens, unfortunately, because of his club foot, was not treated kindly all the time. He was made fun of at different times. And so as he grew up, he remembered that. And he wanted to make sure that everybody was treated fairly and kindly and had a chance to succeed because he had to overcome club foot as a young child and he had to overcome poverty all since. He had two things going against him. A physical disability, he was born very poor. All right, some fifth grade, some fifth grade questions. Ikea. I had three brothers and uh, the uh, Joshua Stevens was my older brother and he had children, which had children, which continued to line down there. Grade five, Kevin. Ah, uh, excellent question. <laughs> well, I don't know if I should answer that question because it might get me in trouble. <laughs> the question was, did you ever help any slaves escape to the north via the Underground Railroad? You have to understand, let me tell you something. The Underground Railroad was illegal. <laughs> and that they wouldn't, they, if they caught you helping slaves uh, escape, they would actually arrest you and put you in jail. So I had to be very, very secret about that. But lots of people suspect that I was uh, involved in the Underground Railroad, uh, of hiding uh, slaves. And also, not only did I possibly hide them, but I also defended them. People would uh, come up and claim that somebody was a slave, and I would represent them to show that they were not the slave of the person uh, who was trying to take them back. And so they would be free. And I did that for nothing. I would not charge them. They didn't have any money anyway. But uh, I, would, uh, I would do that. Hmm? As a lawyer. Yes, as a lawyer, I would defend runaway slaves. So I guess the short answer is yes, I did. <laughs> I'll admit it. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> I, I have been referred to as the 17th and a half president of the United States because after uh, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, 
the president that took over was Andrew Johnson, who was a despicable cur. And he uh, faced Congress, okay? And Congress uh, was under my control. I controlled Congress. And we were able to override his veto. So we were able to do, we were able to run the country for three years, from 1865 to 1863, and I was the man that was in charge, even though I was not technically president. But I have been referred to, because of that, I've been referred to as the 17th and a half president. And thank you for that question. Uh, why did Thaddeus Stevens push so hard for public education? because it is absolutely essential to our country. Without public education, you're going to just have a brutish society that can't make educated decisions. Education is what mankind is all about. And we as a country owe much of our success to a populated, uh, a populated or an educated population. And I would just like to take a uh, moment right now, considering looking around the country at what's happening to teachers and how they're coming under attack, that we should have a little round of applause for the teachers. I was a teacher for a while, and then actually, to tell you the truth, they need a lawyer love was a lot more fun. <laughs> All right, we're going to do two more questions, and then we have two special visitors. Oh, but you see, how long did well, it take to write the amendment? Okay. It took a long time. Because you see, yes. do you, do you uh, deal with your friends when you have like little projects with your friends? And some of your friends say, oh, I, I want to do it this way. And other friends say, oh, I want to do it that way. And you all have to sort of work it out. And say, well, try having like 400 friends <laughs> that you have to work with to come up with this amendment. So I came forward with my idea of what the amendment would be. And frankly, it was a better amendment than what came out. But I had to convince other people that this was a good amendment. And of course, they had to change it their way and so on and so forth. And so it took about two years to have the amendment passed in Congress. All right, last question. Nice if I have what? No, I was never a slave. I was never a slave, uh, but I can feel the pain that the slaves had. I, let me tell you a little story about that. When I was a young lawyer down in Gettysburg, there would be many slave owners that would come up and recapture their slaves. And sometimes they would go into court. And this was before I, just, I dedicated myself to abolishing slavery. And a slave owner came to me and asked me to help him uh, return his slave, to get back his slave. And I went into court, and I was successful in getting his slave returned. But it was more than that. This was a woman that had come up north, had married, and had two children that had never been slaves. But because they were her children, uh, they became slaves. So these were children, like yourselves, who were snatched up and made slaves. And it broke my heart. And after that, I just dedicated my life to fighting slavery. Yes, we did.